So uh, one of the um, great fears of being a speaker in this kind of gathering, one of the nightmare scenarios, especially if you go last as I am here today, is that somebody who went uh, f before you will kind of steal your thunder. Um, I spent a lot of time choreographing a piece that I wanted to uh, teach you here today. <laughs> My name is Brian Green. I'm a physicist at Columbia University, leading an institute focusing on string theory and cosmology. And um, not too long ago, I received a letter from an American soldier who was stationed in Iraq. And he wrote to me to tell me that a book I'd written had become a kind of lifeline for him. And since this is a book about physics, about string theory, about Einstein's dream of a unified theory, that letter might strike you as odd. But in reality, it speaks to the largely untapped capacity of science to give life context and meaning. And what I'd like to do in three minutes is just give you a sense of what I mean by that. We all know that we begin life as kids, as little scientists, right? We constantly want to know what things are and how they work. We begin as these little, unabashed, uninhibited explorers into the unknown. I mean, so many times over the years this has been brought back to me. I was once talking to a first grade class and I wanted to give them a chance to show me what they learned in mathematics. Perhaps I shot a little too high, I asked them some questions in string theory. <laughs> No, I asked them a, a, a division question. I said, you know, how do you do three into six? A few hands shot up. I picked on one kid. She went to the board, drew a big six, and put a three into it. <laughs> it wasn't the answer I was expecting. It wasn't what I was looking for, but it was three into six, and it just showed she didn't care about being right or wrong. She just wanted to give it a shot. About six months ago, I've got a three-and-a-half-year-old son. Six months ago, I was telling him a bedtime story, you know, about aliens traveling near the speed of light, all this kind of stuff. I, I didn't know how much of the story he was really getting. Uh, but he turned to me and said, speed of light? Uh, what about the speed of dark? <laughs> it's a natural, kind of obvious question. I'd never, I'd never heard it before. You know, and, and I think a story that really captures this childlike spirit of exploration is one that Ken Robinson tells. You perhaps have already heard it, but it's worthwhile recounting him. A second grade class, the kids are all drawing pictures. The teacher goes over to one girl and says, what are you drawing? And the girl shoots back, I'm drawing the face of God. The teacher says, well, how do, you, how do you do that? No one knows what God looks like. And she says, in a minute they will. <laughs> This is how we begin life. But so quickly, many of us lose that unabashed, uninhibited desire to explore. We, we become afraid of being wrong. We become intimidated by math and science. Even worse, we begin to think of science as a drag, as boring. And that taps into so fully a culture, our culture, that is so willing an accomplice, allowing people to avoid a significant engagement with science. I mean, think about it. If I were to stand up here and tell you that I was at a dinner party last night and conversation turned to an author that I had never heard of, this guy, um, Shakespeare or something. Um, you know, I, I went home and Googled him, found a Wikipedia article, he'd written some plays, uh, dabbled in poetry. You know, you'd say, that's absurd. Of course everybody knows about Shakespeare. Similarly, if I said the same kind of story with Brahms or Beethoven or Picasso or Van Gogh, it'd be unbelievable. But were I to tell you that very same story, professing an ignorance of Pauli, of Dirac, of Schrodinger, of Benzer, of Gauss, of Riemann, I don't think anybody would bat an eye. Yet those are the Picassos and the Shakespeare's of science. You see, underlying this is a misunderstanding, or, or perhaps a better way of saying it is a, an incomplete grasp of a very critical idea, which is simply this. 
like a life without great music or great literature or great art, a life without science can be fulfilling, to be sure, but it is bereft of something that gives experience a rich and otherwise inaccessible element of dimension. I mean, think about it, from our lonely point in the cosmos, we have, through the power of thought and exploration, touched the very limits of outer and inner space. We've come upon laws that tell us how light travels and black holes form, how time elapses and space expands. We've been able to peer back to a brief moment after the beginning of the universe. We've been able to pry apart matter to figure out the elementary constituents with fantastic accuracy. This is great stuff. This rivals anything that comes out of Hollywood. But yet, when we teach science to our kids, we so quickly focus upon the details. We worry about them solving this equation, or understanding this part of this cell, or balancing this reaction. And when you don't have a commensurate focus on taking students out beyond the stars, science becomes lifeless. But yet, if science is communicated by showing the big ideas, if science is communicated by showing the exhilaration of discovery, if science is communicated by showing the critical problems from climate change to the opportunities with stem cells to the possibility with nanotechnology, wow, it comes to life. I have spoken to kids about the Big Bang and the black holes to watch their eyes light up Man, there's nothing like it. I've spoken to high school dropouts who've come upon great popularizations of books on genomics or nanotechnology and have gone back to school with a renewed sense of purpose. And in that letter from that soldier in Iraq, he told me in heartfelt terms how by studying quantum physics and relativity, in the dusty and dangerous environment of greater Baghdad, it convinced him that there's a larger universal reality of which we are all a part. So the big idea, if you will, is really just a humble proposition. Simply this, science is the greatest of adventure stories. And if we can teach it in a way that captures that drama for the young, for the mature, it is our obligation to do that. We need to embark on a cultural shift in which science takes its rightful place next to art, music, and literature as something that's indispensable to a complete life. It is the birthright of every child. It is a necessity for every adult to be able to look out on the world as that soldier in Iraq did and recognize that the wonders of the cosmos transcend everything that divides us. Thank you very much.